Hi, I'm Randy Martin, CEO of Covenant Community Services, and I want to introduce you to some videos today. These are videos you can choose from that are topics that will help you build a successful life. We know that exiting the foster care system doesn't always prepare someone for the rigors of life, the challenges and obstacles you may face, but we also know there's great people in the community that have a wealth of experience, they come from a variety of organizations, and they have tools and tips that are going to help you succeed as an individual. So watch these videos, learn as much as you can, and then begin to implement them in your life, and I know that you will find great success. Hi, it's Randy Martin from Covenant Community Services. I'm glad I'm here with you today to share a hope talk about conflict resolution and some interpersonal skills. You know, communication takes up so much of our day. You're always talking to someone, negotiating with someone, maybe just trying to get information. But definitely communication can lead to conflicts. You're going to have them with your peers, with your family members, with some good friends, with some not so good friends, you're going to have them with landlords, employees, employers, and conflict's just part of life. Unfortunately, we have so many different values and opinions that conflict's inevitable. 70% of your day is going to be spent talking to someone in some way or another. Your waking hours are going to be spent communicating. Now, it's not always verbal. We give so many cues and um, different hints to how we feel in nonverbal information. We'll talk a little bit about that today, but one of the things that can be very frustrating as you navigate through life is just conflict, how we handle that and what we do. So what I want to do right now is give you a quick communication quiz. I want you to think about a conversation or something that happened to you maybe in the last just day. And I want you to answer these questions. Did you prepare ahead of time for the conversation? Did you think about the best way to approach the person you needed to talk to? Were you aware of the other person's communication styles and did you try to speak to that? Did you pay full attention or were you multitasking when the other person was talking? Was the intent of your communication to understand the person or just to get your point across? Did you listen without interrupting? If you're asking the person to take an action did you make the request clear and short? Did you summarize what you thought were the big points the other person had to say before you expressed your own opinion or thought? Did you follow up to see if the conversation was a success? Did it lead to a positive outcome for either one of you? And if the outcome didn't meet your expectations, did you reflect on how to better communicate the next time? So those are going to come up on the screen in a moment. I really want you to think about them and think about your own communication style because half the battle is what's coming out of your mouth, what you're thinking and then what comes out of your mouth in communication. In fact, we know that a lot of times our communication styles really escalate the problem rather than bring it down to peace. Someone gets in our face, someone disrespects us, someone gives their opinion, or is overbearing and suddenly we climb the ladder we get louder and our face gets meaner and we talk rougher and we even shout and then we get higher and higher and higher until it's just a blow up and that's not the way to do life you know I'm confident that we can do life in a way where we respect one another um, and we we try to understand one another and from that basis of understanding then conflicts don't go away but they're managed so let's talk about how we can get better at communication before we start hitting on conflict. You know, there's, there's really three big parts of communication. It's, it's what's coming out of your mouth, the message. It's the style that it comes out of your mouth. Is it loud? Is it soft? Is it frequent? Is it irregular? It's your body movement. That's another part. So am I closed off? Um, am I distracted, looking past you? What are my eyes telling you? 
Am I interested? Am I engaged? Am I leaning forward? Or am I just too cool to be here in this conversation right now? Do I look at you or do I look away a lot? Am I nervous? Um, and then distance and space. Am I all in your face, up close? Or am I more relaxed and in and appropriate body space? Am I too far away where I'm afraid of you and afraid to talk? These are all things we need to think about as far as the message. These are the nonverbal cues that we're giving. It's, it's not the words we're sharing, but how we're sharing the words. I can say no, 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 no. And each one of those has a different meaning in just one word. So you can say a lot of things in, in your tone, in the, the pitch, and your facial expressions are all giving clues to what that nonverbal message is. So the nonverbal cues we use in life are going to give people so many hints. And in fact, that's most of what they'll receive. Researchers say that 60 to 90% of communication is nonverbal, meaning the words that come out of your mouth are really the least of your concern. It's your stance, it's your position, it's your eye contact, it's your posture. It's what you're doing with your arms. Are you fidgeting? Are you always moving around? It's what you're doing with your eyes. Are you looking left, looking right? Are you looking over their shoulder to see if there's somebody more interesting to talk to? Your nonverbal cues are really what you need to work on, and especially in conflict. When you go into conflict and you're already steaming and hot and doing your face like this, then you know, you've already lost most of the chance to communicate and get on even ground. Having an open stance, whether it's your palms open or your body language open to the person and being intentful, leaning in and listening, that's going to be uh, received by that person as you're trying to understand them, not just get your point across, which is really, you know, the thing that I want you to take away from today is that so much of con conflict can be resolved if you really just seek to understand more than be understood. You know, Stephen Covey uh, coined that phrase. And I think it's a great one for you to remember today is seek to understand before you seek to be understood. So much of what goes on in the conflict arena when we talk about communication really happens because of values, conflicts, or opinions and differences. Very few issues are so cut and dry as someone did this and then someone did this. It's more about my feelings or emotions or something um, strong like that in the center of my soul was affected by something you did or said. So you didn't take out the trash, maybe something that is on a list of things that you do to help out around the house, but the undercurrent and the underlying message of you not taking out the trash is that you don't respect me and is that you don't care about my feelings or my time. And now I have to go and do that or the trash doesn't go out and then it piles up until next week which every time I see the trash now just makes me more upset because you're the person that disrespected me. So very few times is it just about something as simple as taking out the trash. It's about the respect and the commitments we, we make to one another that are real value changers that are at the core of the issue. So if you can go to someone and begin to practice what we like to call I statements. I statements take the blame off of the other person because we don't use the word you so much. You didn't take out the trash and you're a bum, right? Instead we lead with an I statement. Um, I noticed that you didn't take out the trash and when that doesn't happen I feel disrespected as a person because now I have to stop whatever I'm doing to focus on the things that need to get done in addition to the things I committed to like vacuuming and doing the dishes. So when the trash doesn't get taken out not only does it take away from my time, but I feel totally disrespected. Now that's an I message. It tells the person what was wrong, it tells them how you feel, and it takes the you and the blame all out of it. It really puts the weight on your feelings and your emotions, which is the undercurrent. So conflict resolution really asks you to learn more about yourself. You have to dig a little bit deeper and figure out what you're bringing to the table. That's why we started this with the, the IQ. Uh, of your communication test. Just just see where you're at. If you're distracted and you're not listening, if you're, you know, the one of the things I hate the worst, I'll go to a park and see some mom playing with her kid and she's on her phone Facebooking and Instagramming and doing who knows what on her phone and her kid's just trying to say, Mom, watch me on the swings. And if that's you, man, that's horrible. That's a horrible trait. You're not giving that person your attention or your time. 
you need to start a revolution in your life to where we give people the time of day when we're talking to them. Put away the computer, put away the Facebook, turn off the noise, which could be anything, the TV, um, other people being around. If you got something you really want to say to someone, say it in private. Don't air all your stuff out publicly, say it in private. And that's such a good tool to use as well. You know, you can affirm people and co congratulate them and celebrate with them publicly, but privately, discipline. Privately, you know, talk to folks about something where you're hurt or something's wrong. So I think that um, one of the things I want to do right now to help you kind of launch this out is just give you some, some tips I wrote down here. And one of them is talk less, hear more. You know, the Bible's real clear on this in so many different ways, and I think it's just wisdom. It comes out of wisdom books. It, it says, you know, um, pithy little statements like, um, keep your mouth shut. You know, the one who quiets his mouth will be considered wise. A modern-day proverb to that is, um, you know, stay quiet, and less people will think you're a fool. Or open your mouth, and you can remove all doubt. So talk less and listen more. In James, the Bible says, be slow to anger, slow to speak, and quick to listen. It's funny that we have two ears and one mouth. You know, use those things more than you do speak, and you'll become someone that's considered a compassionate listener or understanding. And actually, you'll be a better friend, a better mom, a better dad, a better worker, because you listen rather than just give your opinion. So, one, talk less, hear more. Two, man, don't shoot the messenger. You know, so many times people just have to give you news. They have to let you know something's going wrong or, or maybe that you didn't do something right. Could be a case manager. Could be anyone you work with. Could be even your own child. But don't shoot the messenger. They may be sharing with you something that is their own perspective and their emotion or their uh, soul, something that's going on there. And don't pass judgment. Just listen and try to learn and become better as a person. Just take it in and concentrate on the message and not the messenger. You know, another one that I, I love is avoid mind reading. Don't assume that you can read my mind, and don't assume that I can read your mind. If you have a feeling or emotion, please share it with me, and I want to share mine with you. And you know, um, this is a little bit off color maybe, but the, even the word assume, if you break that down, it says some crazy things. And you'll see that up on the screen, but don't do it. Just don't do that. Don't be a donkey by thinking that I know what you're talking about, or that you know what I'm talking about. I'll share with you, and if I don't share it with you, then just don't create an opinion. Don't assume things, don't mind read. Listen. And then, you know, another one that's great is just don't be pushy. Don't try to get your point across. If you're trying to win an argument, become a lawyer. But life isn't about winning arguments. Life is about love and joy and peace, and you're not gonna have that if you always have to be right. You know, Kim and I were out on um, one of our anniversary trips, our 15-year anniversary. We met a couple that had been married for 55 years. And I got around the old guy and said, hey, man, how did you do it? And he said, you know, I, I, I thought about this. And a long time ago, I made the decision that I could be right or I could be happy. And man, I thought that was just so wise. Because, you know, you could be right about a lot of things. But it doesn't mean it's going to be good for you and good for your relationship. Being right isn't always the right thing to do. Being at peace with people will eventually win out in everything, as will love will win out in everything. So don't focus on being right all the time. I know there are situations where you need to improve your communication style, and where improving your communications will also help you with your conflict. I know there's situations at work where you can have better outcomes and you can become more successful because you're changing the way you speak to people. You're engaging in more. I guarantee you this, if you just listen more, Every single relationship in your life will get better. If you listen to hear what people are saying and to understand them instead of trying to be understood. If you listen to learn and to grow instead of trying to get your own opinion out there. That's so important. So know about yourself. You know, figure out where you might be weak in this. Figure out how you do stand when you talk to people. And if you smile or look them in the eye, or if you look away or distract, or if you always play with a pen or doing something else instead of giving attention. And then manage yourself. Man, watch your tone. Don't get excited. Don't go way up here. Just be right here and be calm. Be cool. Try to avoid the word you 
and, and, and give more feelings about I, I statements. And then, you know, give feedback. Feedback's such a great interpersonal skill to give. You can check in with people. You can nod your head that you're listening. Then you can clarify and summarize at the end. That's also feedback. So let me get what you're saying correctly. Um, you're offended, and you, I, I hurt your feelings because I didn't take out the trash. And you feel disrespected when, when I don't take out the trash. Is that right? And give the person the time to give you feedback. Right? That, that helps clarify the message. You can also do that with the task. Let me get this right. If I hang a note on the door that says, do not disturb, that could mean that I'm, you're filming. And you don't want me to walk in when you're filming. Is that correct? That's correct. And so just even tasks like that are really helpful to clarify what's going on so we don't end up taking the conflict to another level or create a different conflict altogether. And try to talk about the now. You know, so much of conflict, we drag in the past like we're trying to convict someone of a trial. Uh, talk about now, what's going on right now. And then just acknowledge, you know, acknowledge that we may disagree. We can leave the room and, and we may not agree about timelines and who said what, when they said this, when they said that. But bottom line, you're in a relationship with that person for a reason. Either it's to uh, produce something more at work or to uh, you know, grow a family together or you're in love with each other or you have a relationship as a friend and everybody has mutual needs. And remember, those are the base reasons why we're in, engaged with each other in relationship, not so we can be right in a conversation. And then, you know, another thing is discuss the matter on which you degree, disagree, not the nature of the other person. Don't start talking about their character. Don't start talking about problems with them and other things they've done. Just talk to them about what happened. What is the thing we're actually talking about? Don't dance around the issue. What can we do to fix the problem? And then, you know, suddenly the complaint might go away because the problem could be something you're doing, but it could also be something that they're not doing or didn't see right. So focus on actions you both can do to clarify and fix the issue, not just beat the person up and make them feel worse and less about themselves. And if you don't agree on anything, just cool off. There's no sense in just arguing for arguing's sake. Take a cool off time. Man. Everybody go on a little time out and get back together when cooler heads are there. That's where the saying comes from, cooler heads will prevail. And then lastly, you know, thank, thank someone. Thank someone for just listening. You know, that will encourage them to listen more next time. It's just say thank you. Thank you for taking the time today to listen to me and hear my feelings. Now, if you're in a relationship with someone else, you have a significant other or a family member, you should be doing this daily. You know, check in with your kids. See how they're doing. If you have a spouse or boyfriend or girlfriend, check in with them. See how they're doing. Have a cup of coffee. Have a soda. Have something. Sit down and talk. And share communication styles and learn from one another and see where you're missing the point and your life will be enriched. You know, I love sitting down with Kim and, and people on the Covenant team and, and hearing about the great stories of hope that are going on in your very life. I love sitting with you guys when I have the chance to and, and hearing all the good things that are happening in your life. I love even hearing the challenges and see you, um, you know, you're my heroes, you're overcoming so much of life, see you overcome yet another obstacle that the world has set in front of you. But take time to do that. Take time to engage people. Take time to make that person the center of the world at the moment and just share with them. And I know your life will be deeply enriched. And when you do hit those conflict moments, man, remember the tips we covered today and just go into it with a smile and come out of it with a smile. You know, as a person of faith, the first thing I do when I'm entering any conflict is ask God to enter the room. Just ask Him to show up and guide you and lead you. And that really helps me because uh, I may want to talk and say something. But you know what? Using my own words of advice that I gave you today, I know God wants me to be quiet more and to listen. So inviting Him in the room is not so much about me in getting some favor with the other person. It's about me controlling my own spirit so I don't escalate, so I don't get excited, but I come with his peace, love, and joy. And bottom line, I'm looking out for that person, not for myself and my own interests, but remember this, seeking to understand more than be understood. So God bless you. Thanks for watching today. Take that communication IQ and uh, score yourself and see where you can get better.